What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. And in today's video, I'll be showcasing what results I managed to pull from the MacSpec M3 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you're wondering what the full spec for this MacBook Pro is, I'll leave it down below in this video's description. But just before you head to the description, why not hit that subscribe button as we are on the road to 10,000 subscribers, clicking that bell to be notified when any of my new videos go live. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. So first things first, this is the max spec model. As I mentioned, so it will set you back £4,199 here in the United Kingdom. And I am going to be running a number of different tests through this video. So be sure to stick around to the very end to hear my thoughts and opinions on this particular machine. So the first test which I ran on this MacBook Pro was from Geekbench, but from their older version of tests so we can compare to older models. So this was from Geekbench 4. Now when running the CPU test from Geekbench 4, I got a single core score of 7,862 with a multi-core score of 45,146. And when it comes to running the compute test through Geekbench 4, I got an OpenCL score of 184,968 and when it comes to running the test through Metal, I got a score of 149,905. I then ran Geekbench 5 which is once again a slightly older version of Geekbench but it's once again to see how this MacBook Pro compares to other machines. So when running the CPU test through Geekbench 5, I got a single core score of 1,755 with a multi-core score of 11,845. And when it comes to running the OpenGL compute test through Geekbench 5, I got a score of 45,313. However, when it comes to running the Metal compute test through Geekbench 5, I got a score of 51,991. As you're probably expecting, I did run the latest version of Geekbench, being Geekbench 6, and when running the CPU test, I got a single core score of 3,165, with a multi-core score of 15,617. And when it comes to running the OpenGL compute test through Geekbench 6, I got a score of 50,256, and when running the Metal test, I got a score of 76,622. I then ran a number of different Cinebench versions and started off with Cinebench R20 and when running this test I got a score of 4086 and when it comes to running Cinebench R23 I got a single core score of 1959 with a multi-core score of 15108 which gives us a ratio of 7.71. I then ran the latest version of Cinebench, Cinebench 2024. Now when running the CPU test through Cinebench 2024, I got single core scores of 141, multi-core scores of 1050, which indeed gives us a ratio of 7.46. And when it comes to running the GPU test through Cinebench 2024, I got a score of 6,394. I then ran a number of different graphics tests and started off with a lineup from 3D Mark. The first of these was the wildlife test, which was a little useless as it managed to max out this test with it scoring a maxed out result with it also averaging 60 frames per second. So when it comes to running the wildlife stress test, this too was also quite useless as it was very consistent with it scoring 10,020 points every single time. So I then wanted to step up this test and ran the wildlife extreme test and when running this test we saw pretty much the same thing with it also scoring 10,020 points with it also averaging 60 frames per second and when it comes to running the wildlife stress test the highest score it managed to achieve was 10,020 and conversely the lowest score it managed to achieve was 10,020 showing how consistently this MacBook Pro is performing when it comes to graphics tests of this nature. I also wanted to test the ray tracing capabilities of this MacBook Pro's M3 Pro chip. So I then ran the Solar Bay test from 3D Mark, and when running this test, it managed to score 15,780, with it also averaging 60 frames per second. 
And when it comes to running the solar based stress test, it was identical to all the other stress tests. With the highest score it managed to achieve being 15,780, whilst its lowest score was also 15,780. This once again goes to show how well the M3 Pro is being cooled in the chassis of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I wanted to further see how this MacBook Pro's 18 core GPU would perform, so I then ran GFX Bench Metal, which runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of intensity, which I ran both on and off screen. And in the interest of saving some time, I have calculated the average across the category, but as always, I will show you each individual result. So the average that I got for the higher intensive tasks was 365.4 frames per second, whereas the average I got for the lower level intensive tasks was 351.76 frames per second. I also ran Nova Bench 2. Now, Nova Bench is a good general benchmark as it tests all aspects of the machine from the CPU and GPU, along with other aspects like the system memory and the storage. Now, when it comes to running this test, I got a score of 3025. I also tested the 4TB SSD in this MacBook Pro and when running the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test I got write speeds of 7206.8 megabytes per second with read speeds of 5242 megabytes per second. I also ran another disk speed test, this time the Aja System Speed Test and when running this I got write speeds of 7193 megabytes per second with read speeds of 4672 megabytes per second. I then ran a Wi-Fi speed test and got download speeds of 172 megabits per second and upload speeds of 55.3 megabits per second. I also ran the Antutu HTML browser benchmark and got scores of 92,650. I also ran Speedometer 2.0 and in this test this MacBook Pro scored 607. I also ran the V-Ray test and when running this test it scored 9485. I then wanted to see how this MacBook Pro would perform when it came to rendering out a number of scenes using the CPU and GPU through Blender. And so I used the CPU to render the classroom scene and when rendering this scene it took 7 minutes and 19 seconds and when it comes to using the GPU it did this much faster with it taking 1 minute and 14 seconds to complete. I also rendered the BMW scene using the CPU and this took 3 minutes and 6 seconds to complete, however it took 33 seconds to complete when rendering using the GPU. So I then ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark at a number of different resolutions and graphic settings. So starting off with this MacBook Pro's native resolution of 3456 by 2234 this MacBook Pro at high settings managed to render 3546 frames with it averaging 22 frames per second and when the graphic settings was lowered from high to medium it this time managed to render 3630 frames with it now averaging an additional frames per second up to 23 frames per second and when the resolution was lowered to 2560 by 1600 with the graphic settings set to high it this time rendered 5997 frames with it now averaging 38 frames per second and when the graphic settings were lowered to medium, it now rendered 6,213 frames, with it now averaging 39 frames per second. Lowering the resolution once again to 1920 by 1200 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it this time managed to render 9,223 frames, with it now averaging 58 frames per second. And when the graphic settings were lowered to medium, it now managed to render 9,629 frames, with it now averaging 61 frames per second. And finally, lowering the resolution down to 1200 by 854 and keeping the graphic settings to high, it now managed to render 14,483 frames with it now averaging 92 frames per second and when the graphic settings were lowered to medium it now managed to render 15,267 frames with it now averaging 97 frames per second. I wanted to further test this MacBook Pro's graphical capabilities so I ran a number of further graphics tests from Unigen benchmarking tools. Now starting off with the Heaven benchmark test which was run at 1728 by 1117. Now when running this test I got a score of 3298 
with an average frame rate of 130.9 frames per second. I once again ran the Heaven benchmark this time at a slightly lower resolution of 1440 by 900 and when running at this resolution it scored 3846 with an average frame rate of 152.7 frames per second. Also from Unigen benchmarking tools I ran their valley test and once again started off by running at the same resolution of 1728 by 1117. Now when running at this resolution this MacBook Pro scored 4,933 with it averaging a frame rate of 117.9 frames per second. And when the resolution was lowered once again to 1440 by 900, it scored 4,978 with it now averaging 119 frames per second. I also ran a timed render export using Final Cut Pro, exporting a 5 minute 29 second video file to H.264. Now when rendering at full HD, that's 1920 by 1080, it took 40 seconds to export, whereas when it comes to exporting the 4K project, which sat at 3840 by 2160, it completed it in 2 minutes and 34 seconds. So to quickly summarize, I mean, I've taken a little look at the results that I got when running on the entry 16 inch MacBook Pro with the same M3 Pro chip with 18 gigabytes of unified memory with its one terabyte SSD. And sure, in some areas like the SSD performance, the SSD in that one terabyte model is not as fast as what we've seen with this model with its four terabytes of storage which for the most part is to be expected, but when it comes to looking at the performance of the M3 in this MacBook Pro over that entry model with its 18 gigabytes of unified memory compared to this model with 36 gigabytes, there really isn't much of a difference, especially when it comes to tasks like video editing and even when it comes to a bit of gaming, as the frame rates don't really improve. And even when it comes to rendering scenes through Blender, there really wasn't much, if any, of a difference. Sure, this model with 36 gigabytes of unified memory was slightly faster, but at the end of the day, it was barely a couple of seconds. And sure, if it knocked off minutes or double digit percentages off of the time to export, then sure, for some people, then it may warrant the upgrade. But from where I'm sitting looking at the results, that's really not the case. Hey, so do us a favor, if you've watched all of this video, be sure to subscribe, smack the like button, make sure you go and follow me on my socials, because trust me, I am working on a lot, and I mean a lot of videos. So go ahead and hit me up over on there, at least then you'll be able to see what videos I'm currently working on. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and have a good one.